I'm Griff Robodanger, and this is Grr Ass, where I recap dumb horror movies and rant about the dumb things that happen in them. Grr Ass stands for Griff Robodanger rants about scary stuff, or Griff Robodanger recaps a stupid story, which is really appropriate for the movie we're going to be covering this time, Scream. Huh? No, not that one. This one. Oh, you didn't know there was a horror movie called Scream from 1981? Ah, well consider yourself lucky, because it sucks. So yeah, I first heard about this movie about 10 years ago. Uh, I saw it on a few lists of uh, 80s slasher movies, and I'm like, you know what? I haven't seen this one. I like slasher movies. I like to collect slasher movies. So I ordered this without knowing anything about it. Turns out, it's not really a slasher movie. It's more of just a piece of shit. Let's take a look. The movie starts out with a bunch of people rafting down a river. We don't find out much about these people, but you're going to find out soon that's for the best because they're all idiots. For whatever reason, a large chunk of this movie's score sounds like a bad 1980s sitcom. Doesn't really fit the horror theme, but whatever. Oh look, I'm a Pepper. Yeah, this won't be the last time you see Dr. Pepper in this movie. We're just having a good time. We're just having a good time. Yeah, because you know you're having a good time when you have to repeat it to yourself over and over again. You got a soft drink there? Thank you. <laughs> I have never in my entire life heard of anybody specifically ask for a soft drink. Beautiful out here. It just sounds like a bunch of voices recorded over each other. <laughs> what the hell are you nodding about? She didn't even say anything. So they finally get off their dumb rafts and get on land. And they climb up this giant hill, and that's when we meet Lou. Everybody hates Lou. Everybody in this movie hates Lou. I think even the movie itself hates Lou. Poor Lou's trying to get up the hill, and they just kind of make fun of him for it. Listen, I think we should all pile of stuff on Lou. Hey, Lou, carry my pack, will you? He needs it. He really needs it. The kid needs to get into shape. So they finally made it up the hill, and they have their Dr. Pepper cooler. Hey, two product placements already. Uh, but hey, where's that girl's Dr. Pepper hat? So they finally reach their destination, this old west town. Wow, I love it. Looks like this was a housing project built by the government. Okay, what kind of bullshit is that? I've played a lot of Red Dead Redemption. I kind of know my shit. That's not housing. That's like the, the general store and like the sheriff's place and the saloon. Housing. My ass. Is it really hot? Well, my family has lived here for generations. They lived in this old rundown western town? My father and grandfather said that. Hey, sax solo. Maybe shut the hell up so we can hear the characters explain the frickin' story. Until we kind of meet some of the characters, like we meet these two girls who are girls, I guess. That's all we pretty much know about them. We meet these two guys who work together. Listen, Ross, about the office. Oh, come on, Al. No business talk now, huh? This weekend is strictly for fun. You need some help there, honey? Then we got this blue jacket girl, who I don't know who she's with. We meet this group, the old guy and his daughter, and then this other dude who's just a total prick, and they don't really explain who he is to them. I mean, maybe it's her husband, maybe it's her boyfriend, maybe it's her brother. I don't I don't know who the hell this guy is. Hundred bucks a piece to look at a slum in a desert. So this is the first time the movie gives us any indication of what they're all doing there. I guess they all paid a hundred dollars to go on a raft and go camp out in this old western town. That's going to turn out really well for them. And then we have the two cowboy brothers. I don't know if they're actually brothers, but I'm going to call them that. They're basically the ones running this whole tour. So they finally get to their destination, this western village, and they... Uh, sing some songs and then go to bed! Oh, that was totally worth the hundred dollars to raft out to this old western town to just go to bed on the dirty western town floor. That's super fun, yeah. You gonna sleep with that on? You're worse than a kid. That's Lou's best friend, I guess? I mean, it's the guy he came on the trip with. I don't really know why this guy brought Lou if he hates him so much, and I don't know why Lou went on the trip if his friend's that much of an asshole to him all the time. You sleep your way and I'll sleep mine. Besides, I'm not taking any chances. Uh, and I don't tell me you really believe in ghosts. Next thing you know, you'll tell me you believe in the Easter Bunny. <laughs> I'm glad you think it's funny. The old guy in the captain hat goes for a walk, and then the blue jacket girl goes looking for him. Even though I don't really think they know each other that well. <coughs> hey, 
and she finds his dead body, it drops from this noose. So they all get together to discuss the dead guy, and the cabin is really well lit considering there doesn't seem to be electricity. And that must be one hell of a lantern the way it lights that entire room. Somebody here is a murderer. Well, you don't seem to be too upset over your friend's death. I don't believe I have to show you how I feel. Maybe you do. Yeah, I want to see some tears, you murdering son of a bitch. What do you two have to say? Is part of the tour? No, it isn't. I think that was a rhetorical question, dude. I love his deadpan delivery, though. No, we did not plan a murder for this tour. It is not part of the planned festivities. When we get down river tomorrow, stop off at the park rangers and call the sheriff. Terrific! Great! Good idea! Yeah! I'm gonna talk sarcastically every time I agree with something! In the meantime, we got a psychopath running around loose. So the movie cuts to a scene with a wall full of weapons. We'll see this a few more times. I need a drink. Where's the beer? The ice chest is in the jail. I'll get it. I'll get it. Anyone else? I'll take one. Are you sure you should go out alone? I'll be all right. All right, so we already have one dead body, and we already have one idiot that decides, you know what, I need to go out alone and get a beer in the next building, even though somebody just murdered my business partner. I should point out, he only grabbed the one beer, even though he told that other dude he was going to get him a beer. So, I mean, I guess he kind of had it coming, right? So they finally realize that guy's gone and go to look for him and find his body. There, there must be something in here to help us find out who did it. You know what I mean? I think we ought to get back to the saloon. But I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. I don't think any of us will. I'll tell you something else. Except this old guy, Detective Dipshit, decides, you know what, now's a good time for a crime scene investigation. Even though it's pitch black, and I don't know shit about detective work, apparently. Yeah, because I'm sure those clues aren't going to be there in the morning, in the middle of nowhere. You can't just wait till it's bright out where you can actually see what the hell you're doing. <laughs> so if you're keeping track, that's two characters that since finding a dead body, have decided, I'm going to go out and explore on my own. And that's two characters that are now dead. I'm just going to let you know, this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this movie. <laughs> so it's finally morning. They go back to the river to find their rafts, but the rafts aren't there anymore. Is there any other way out? No. What are you talking about? There's a road that leads out of town we can walk out of here. That's not very practical. It's 30 miles across those mountains to the nearest ranch. Then we're stuck here. Until they come for us from the ranch. How long is that gonna be? Maybe tonight. Oh, you'll be hearing about this in my Yelp review. So they all go back to Creepy Murder Town. Lou wanders off by himself because I guess he doesn't think he can get killed in the daytime. And he wanders into this building where the dead bodies are, I guess? <laughs> or maybe it's just the sex shack. Anyway, he escapes. And suddenly, these two motorcycle dudes show up. What the hell are they just sitting there for? Well, do something, you stupid bastards. We're lost. We've been flying all over these mountains all day long. This is Jerry, I'm Rod. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Quick question, though. Are you murderers? Oh, we'll become fast friends, I'm sure. Oh, well, since we're friends now, you want to help us move a couple of dead bodies? We stored them a couple doors down from our drinking shack, and the stink is starting to drift. So Red Shirt Dude gives his motorcycle to one of the Cowboy Brothers so he can go get help with the other motorcycle guy. Okay, now Jerry, will you take care of him? Yeah. Okay, and would you drive carefully? Take care of my bike. It's only got a few miles on it. They all sit down to eat, but they're mostly just playing with their food. This lady is literally just stabbing her plate. Lou is apparently a loud eater, so they all shame him. The entire group. I mean, 
mean, come on, we're eating slop off paper plates in an old western town with three dead bodies across the street. Why don't you show some manners? So they shame him to the point where he wanders off by himself, and they all just let him, even though three people have already been murdered somewhere in the town. But he was a loud eater, so fuck him, I guess. So we cut to night. Lou is sleeping alone in the saloon with a lantern and a loud stereo playing. It suddenly stops by itself. Lou wakes up and he doesn't see anybody around, so he kind of freaks out. He goes out looking for people. There's a whole tarantula thing. So he goes to this building and I guess one of the dead bodies falls on him somehow? I don't... whatever. So Lou runs into the rest of the gang, who have apparently been out all night searching for him. And they're pissed at him for being lost. Where the hell have you been? Lou, we've been looking all over for you. Never mind. I don't want to hear about it. That's what happens when you're dealing with an idiot. He wouldn't have enough sense to shit if his mother didn't call him every day and remind him. Okay, look, assholes. First of all, you gave him shit until he left. And you let him leave. So it's your fault he left in the first place. Second, he was in the saloon building, which is the main building they've been hanging out the whole movie. So he basically just returned to his home base after his walk, and these idiots decide to wander around like dipshits for hours in a village that has like maybe 10 empty buildings. Third, he had a bright ass lantern on and a radio blasting loud rock music. How did you not find him like right away? You've got to be the dumbest motherfuckers alive. I think I'll get some coffee. I'll get it for you. Would you? How do you want it? Black. You got it. Damn it. Yeah, what a bummer. What do you... Damn. Son of a bitch is crazy. Yeah, murdering four people, that's a little weird. But breaking a mirror, this dude is nuts. How long would it take them to get there? Maybe two hours. Something's happened to them. It's not a very positive attitude. Well, you can take your positive attitude and you can stuff it. Listen, mister, you can just kiss off. I don't take that kind of lip from anybody. Let alone from any damn female. Yeah, I don't take lip from anyone. I only do Eskimo kisses. In fact, one time my grandma tried to come up and kiss me on the cheek. I slapped her across the face. I'm like, I don't think so, female. Mm -mm. So we get another Dr. Pepper cameo. This time they're making some sort of trap out of the empty cans. Is that enough? Yeah, I think so. What do you think? I guess it'll work. Can't hurt. Of course, we have to be a moron not to see it. Basically, everybody in this movie could fall for it. We'll be all right. As long as we stay together. We're okay as long as we stay inside. Why is this happening now? Why is this happening? She's leaving. She's just going out even though everybody gets... Uh, whatever. What the hell is going on? And that wasn't even that good of a trap. I don't really understand the physics with that. What was that? Careful How is she? I think she's all right. Well, why the hell did she go out by herself in the first place? I don't understand that either. It's kind of strange we should all fall asleep at the same time. Okay, so now the movie seems to be suggesting that there's some otherworldly thing at play here that made everybody fall asleep except for a blue jacket girl, which it somehow hypno hypnotically controlled her to wander into another place and fall asleep there instead of like... Why wouldn't it just control her to wander into the axe? What was that? What do you think it is? I don't know. Then a creepy cowboy dude appears, riding a horse. He's ringing this bell with another horse by his side. Nobody seems to be terribly alarmed. No screaming, no, who the fuck is this? These assholes showed more emotion when Lou was eating his dinner too loudly. Rudy, there's something under the blanket. It's Jerry. Oh, thanks, weird cowboy man, for bringing us the corpse of the other biker guy, who we met for, like, five minutes. We don't even know his last name. Also, why are you bringing him here and not the police station? What do you expect us to do with him? Do you see a fucking hearse parked outside? We don't even have any means of transportation to get the hell out of here. How are we supposed to get this guy back to civilization? 
If anything, we should be loading up your horse with the other four corpses we got rotting across the street. Ask him about Stan. Why don't you ask him? He's right f***ing there! So I guess they invite him in and gather around like a bunch of kindergartners at story time. There were two of them. Did you see the other? Did you see the other? Alrighty then. I was a sailor, you know. No, we didn't know that, weird cowboy man, because we just met your creepy ass. Sailed the horn 35 times. Many times. 35 times, or to be more specific, many times. We'd run before the wind. Me behind that big iron wheel. That's great. Uh, what about our friend Stan? That old man feared nothing. Oh yeah, cool, great story. Hey, uh, what about Stan? Me and the captain. We came here when they give him nary another ship. You know, I'm not sure if we mentioned this before, but we have this friend named Stan? They were cruel men. Them's that run the ships. Company men. You don't say. As a side note, where the fuck is Stan? The captain gave me this. The first time I sailed the horn. So he shows him his magic voodoo compass, and in the next scene... Oh, you're leaving! Okay, so are you gonna send help, or... I don't know, maybe let one of us use your spare horse? No? No? Uh, okay. You know, it's, it's fine. We're allergic anyway. He never told us about Stan. But boy, I'm glad we learned about that compass. So meanwhile, they see a light in the building across the way. Stay here. No, I'm going with you. We better all go. We did see a light in here, didn't we? The rest of you stay here. And don't go outside. Oh, another person going off alone. I'm sure he has a really good reason. Oh, he just forgot the coffee. He somehow comes back not dead. Lou, hand me that 2 by 4 <clears throat> That should hold it. Should it? Jeez. It turns out it's Stan. He's somehow back and alive. We better get the first aid kit. I'll get it. Wait. Well, just because he's leaving by himself doesn't mean anything bad's gonna. Ah. Never mind. No. Oh no. no. I mean, I know he was an asshole, but you didn't have to kill him five times. And if you hated that other loudmouth jerk, well, guess what? He gets killed too. It's like the movie realized at the very last minute that all the a-hole characters were still alive and that people would get pissed if you didn't kill them off. And then, a couple seconds later, this pickup truck shows up with these two old people. And then for the final scene of the movie, we go back to the weird house with the creepy dolls and we see a painting of the captain. And, oh look, it's dated 1891. So the killer is the ghost of a sea captain from the 1800s, who's stalking a old western town in the middle of Texas. Why do they pick a sea captain? Why not pick like an old cowboy bandit or something, you know? I mean, they could have easily made the story like an old cowboy bandit that was like hanged for his crimes in the middle of town square, so now he's haunting that whole town to get revenge or something. I mean, it would have made a lot more sense than a sea captain randomly being in this old west town. I have this feeling that the producers got this painting of a sea captain at a yard sale and they really wanted to work it into their movie somehow. So he's a ghost, but he's somehow using this wall of axes and cleavers instead of like just doing ghost shit? I mean, he can throw people through walls. Why is he still bothering with axes? Why doesn't he do just crazy ghost killings? And apparently he can make people fall asleep on command, which, why doesn't he just make them all fall asleep and then just go chop them all up? 
So if he's just been haunting this old ghost town and killing everybody that comes in the ghost town, how did he manage to kill Jerry the biker guy? And how did he manage to injure Stan? I mean, they took off on motorcycles. I mean, did this guy catch up with him and kill him? And then, if that's the case, why did he do that? If he's killing people at the ghost town, they were out of the ghost town at that point. I mean, is he just going to chase anybody that's ever visited the ghost town to wherever they are? I mean, what if they went to, like, Korea or something? Is he going to follow them there and somehow kill them? So then you have the weird old cowboy guy who was apparently on the ship with the captain who was from the 1800s. So that would either make the cowboy like 120 years old or he's also a ghost i don't understand why he even left like if he's a ghost and he knows there's another ghost there to kill why doesn't he just hang out and wait and kill him when he shows up i mean two more people died because he left i mean did he have to go back to his ghost cabin and go into his ghost inventory box and get his ghost blaster so these characters have to be the dumbest sons of bitches i've ever seen in my entire life they kept getting killed because they were basically going out alone when the whole point of the movie was hey let's all get together and stick together and it will be safe and then one by one, people had the dumbest reasons for saying, okay, but I'm going to do this dumb thing that's going to get me killed. How about that? So one guy went to get a beer. One guy decided to play detective. One guy went to get coffee. And then after that, another guy went to get coffee and somehow didn't get killed. I don't know how the hell that happened. This guy went to get a first aid kit. And this guy just went outside, I guess. And Blue Jacket Girl just left for no freaking reason. And it almost got killed by the Dr. Pepper cans. <laughs> I'm so pissed at this thing. I mean, I own this. This movie sucks. I was tricked into getting this damn movie. Okay, let me say something. If anybody tells you this is a slash movie, you can tell them to go to hell. It's just some piece of shit ghost murder movie. Yeah, so I wouldn't recommend this one. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like horror stuff, you know, there's a bunch more on this channel, so go ahead, check it all out. Um, you know, maybe even subscribe if you like what you see. Whatever. Until next time, later, Danger Seekers.